Visualization of Discrete Gradient Construction We show a visualization of the construction of a discrete gradient vector field from sampled scalar value data. Morse theory is a useful tool in the analysis of scalar functions. Past successes of such analysis include finding the core structure of a porous medium and identifying dissipation elements in combustion simulations. One way to translate concepts from the smooth theory to discrete domains is using Foreman-style discrete Morse theory. To do so requires a discretization of the function. In many cases, though, it is sufficient to discretize the gradient of the function. A discrete vector field is a set of pairs of cells where a dimension D cell is paired with a dimension D plus one cell such that the D cell is a face of the D plus one cell. We say that a gradient arrow points from the D cell to the D plus one cell. In two-dimensional simplicial complexes, an arrow can point from a vertex to an edge or from an edge to a triangle. Unpaired cells are critical with an index of criticality equal to the dimension of the cell. Each cell is paired in exactly one gradient arrow or is critical. The discrete equivalent of flow is achieved by following discrete gradient arrows. A discrete vector field is a discrete gradient field if the flow is acyclic. We describe an algorithm to construct this pairing giving initial function values at the vertices. First, we assign function values to every cell of the complex equal to the maximum of its vertices. This example shows the construction of a discrete gradient vector field on a terrain. Cells are colored by their function value, cyan for low values, and magenta for high. We use a priority Q-based algorithm to assign gradient arrows in a region-growing approach. Critical vertices are displayed using red spheres and critical edges and triangles are colored in red. The black arrows indicate the pairing of the discrete gradient field. Non-critical paired cells are rendered in either yellow or blue. Cells whose flow terminates at a minimum are marked in yellow, and cells whose flow terminates at a saddle are marked in blue. The pairing is first done restricted to the boundaries next extended to the interior. We initialize our priority queue with vertices whose neighbors have higher function values. These are potential minima. Cells are popped off the queue one by one, and assigned ones are discarded. If an unassigned cell can be paired, it is. Otherwise, it is marked critical. We call cells that have been paired or marked critical assigned. A cell can be paired when it has exactly one unassigned cofacet. When a cell is assigned, its unassigned cofacets are added to the priority queue if they can be paired. When an unassigned vertex is popped off the priority queue, it is always marked critical. When an edge with no unassigned vertex is popped off the queue, it cannot be paired and is marked critical. In this case, it is a saddle. The priority queue is sorted first by increasing function value, second by decreasing dimension, and then finally by cell index. A triangle that cannot be paired is a critical two cell, a maximum. The algorithm terminates when every cell has been assigned. The cells colored in yellow are a part of ascending two manifolds and the cells colored in blue are a part of ascending one manifolds. These, together with the critical cells, form the cells of the Morse complex.